Hello guys and gals, and this is Bub Snow and the Burly Bear Scare by um, Carol Wallace and Bill Wallace, and um, this is part two. And in the last episode, Bub and his, I think Bub is a guy, a boy, I don't know. Um... Bub, right there, and his mom. I'm going to say it's a guy. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it actually says. I don't. Know. Anyways, um, they were being pursued by Roscoe, the um, mountain lion. I believe mountain lion. And this is what happens. Let's go. This is chapter three. The mountain lion raced closer and closer. His sharp teeth glistened against the black edges of his mouth. Any second, I expected him to leap, and at the last moment, he stopped. Snow piled up in front of his paws as he slid to a halt. Arching his back, he turned sideways and hissed. Mother lowered her head and lunged. She, she didn't really charge, though. She took one mighty lunge, then stopped. The mountain lion dodged to the side. I'm hungry, he snarled. The little moose looks just, just the right size. I started to run. Stop, Mother ordered. Stay behind me. The mountain lion circled us. Back arched in every step, quiet and soft. He moved closer and closer. I don't want to hurt you. Just get out of the way so um, I can get get at the kid. I'll leave you alone, I promise. Mother snorted at him. Snorted at him. He took another step. Suddenly, she reared up on her hind legs. When she came down, her front hoof swung out and pounded, pounded at him. He dodged out of the way. Her hooves almost shook the ground. When they hit, Roscoe hissed and raised a paw. Circling again, he flipped his tail and started back towards us. Cannot have my baby, mother snorted. You're old enough to know not to mess with a moose. What's wrong with you? Roscoe kind of sucked in his tummy. I'm starving. I haven't had a rat or rabbit in almost a week. I'm hungry. We're hungry too, mother snorted. But you can't have my baby. We'll see about that. Mother pawed at him once more. Snarling, he leapt he leaped aside. I don't want to hurt you, she said, but if you but if I have to, I will. Then you won't be able to hunt. Then you will starve. The mountain lion kept circling, kept inching closer to us as mother circled with him. I moved too so I would stay behind her like she told me. Let's talk this over, mother said. Surely there is some place else you can find a meal. No way, Roscoe sighed. I've looked everywhere. There's, there's not so much as a mouse with all this snow. If I don't find something to eat pretty soon, I'm going to... Mother didn't let him finish what he was going to say. In the blink of an eye, she reared up and bounded towards him on her hind legs. Her front hooves clawed the air. I heard the loud thump, thud when one of them caught the big cat on his left shoulder. He let out a weird squeaking noise and scampered away. I expected Mother to back up to where she had, had left me. She didn't. I raced to get behind her. She sprang up on her hind legs legs and kept slashing at him with her muddy hooves. Roscoe snarled and growled. Every time she pawed, he scampered and scooted and dodged to get out of the way. Mother chased him almost to the edge of the clearing before she stopped. As soon as Roscoe got the chance, he spun around and raced back up the side of the mountain, far enough away and safe. He slowed, he slowed down when he did. He limped a bit, favoring his left side. Mother gave one last snort at him. Then we trotted back to the brush pile. Then she kissed me and cleaned me with her long tongue. Mountain, mountain lions are cats, Mother said. Don't ever run from a cat or a wolf. They'll chase you if you run. But he wanted to eat me. I know Mother kissed me again, but don't ever run from a cat if you stay and fight. Oh. Oh, don't ever run from a cat. If you stay and fight, well... Even if you're a little moose, you have a chance. If you, if you, if you run, my mo uh, my mother kissed me once more. Don't ever, don't ever run. Mother slept standing on her feet again that night. We left early the next morning. Even after a good night's sleep, I felt so tired I could hardly stand. We walked and walked and climbed and climbed. We went uphill and downhill and then up again. I th thought we never would reach the valley. The snow came harder and faster. The wind blew. Now it was almost like a blizzard. I didn't, I didn't know if I could go on. 
I just wanted to curl up in the snow and sleep forever. It was nearly dark on our third day of traveling when we came to a stand of trees. There were five pine trees, and just below them was a stand of aspen. We made our way further down the, sl the steep slope. I noticed that it seemed a little warmer. The wind wasn't so wild and cold. The snow didn't seem to be as deep either. The fierce s snow swirled above us instead of jabbing its cold, icy fingers into our faces. Are we there yet? I could see Mother nod her big, beautiful head. We're, we're there. This is our valley. It, had, it hadn't been... Oh, if I hadn't been so exhausted, I would have hopped and leaped and bounded with joy. As it was, I just kept walking. Mother suddenly stopped in her tracks. I perked my ears and tried to look into the darkness. Shadows trailed across the ridge, but I couldn't see anything. What is it, Mother? I whispered. Mother stood stiff and proud. Hush. Just a minute, little, little bub. I tried to stand as tall as Mother. I kept my head pointed in the same direction as hers. I didn't see anything. Is it Roscoe? Did he follow us, Mother? She shook her head. No, she sighed. Roscoe learned his lesson yesterday. Besides, he won't come this far out of his territory. Roscoe won't bother us here. Now, what is it, Mother? It's worse than a mountain lion, she whispered. There are people here. I didn't see anything. How do you know that there are people here? I pawed at the snow with my hoof. Come in, come in front of me and look, bub. There are buildings that weren't here the last time. There is a wood fence and a wire fence and that were not here before. Squinting, I blinked a couple of, a couple of times. The valley was wide, it was dark, and the snow, even though not blowing and swirling, was thick. It was hard to see. Slowly, shapes began to form. I thought one of the things was a cabin, but I wasn't sure. Snow, snow, and I saw snow, and I saw a lot of cabins and buildings once when we were lost in the people in the in the people town. The, this shape was sort of like a cabin, only there was another shape behind it. A building, maybe. No, a barn. Snow and I met a cow once who lived in a barn. Still, not quite sure what I was looking at. I sniffed the air and took a step closer. Stay back, Bob Moose. We don't know where the people are. With this storm, they're probably inside keeping warm, but with, but with people, you never know. They're strange animals. We'll sleep in the safety of the trees now. When morning comes, there will be enough light for you for you to see. Perhaps the storm will be over by then. We found a little clearing that was well hidden in some trees. We foraged some, but just barely found enough food to nibble. My tummy felt better, but I hoped that tomorrow, when the sun came up, we could find more. I was very hungry, and I knew that my mother was too. The darkness took the darkness took the storm. The darkness took the storm. The, the snow fell gently now. It was no longer blowing and biting. Mother trampled a bed for us next to a pile of brush. When she lay, lay down, I knelt near her and nestle, nestled against her big, warm body. I looked for the shimmering stars above the... Uh, the, shimmering, the I looked for the shimmering stars in the sky. The clouds that brought the snow were still too thick. The only light that I could see was across the valley where Mother said the house was. Brightness like big stars shone from the place where she said the people were. I watched and listened for a long time. I felt warm and safe next to Mother. Slowly, I drifted off. Chapter 4. Yes, Chapter 4. Okay. When the light... Excuse me. When the light from morning fell... Oh, when the light from morning finally began to creep into the valley, everything was crisp and white. Pine limbs drooped beneath the heavy white covering. No snow was falling. The storm was over. I blinked away the sleep, the sleepiness. Mother was still curled up next to me. We were both covered with a blanket of glistening powder. Gently, I, sho I shoved against Mother. She didn't wake up or look at me. She only tucked her face down even lower. I guess she needed a little more sleep. Carefully, I pulled myself up on all fours. I shook the white from my back and wobbly legs. Oh. My, le my wobbly legs braced as I shivered in the clear, crisp morning air. Since Mother was still resting so peacefully, I decided to take a little walk before I woke her. She seemed really nervous about the new people buildings that weren't here the last time she came. I needed to check them out. 
if there were da if there was danger, I could hurry back and warn her. When we could run away, oh, then we could run away. But if it was safe, I needed to know that too. Mother would feel much better if she didn't have to worry so. To worry so. The sky was just getting pink as I started off. At the edge of the trees, I stopped. The high mountain valley seemed even bigger than it had last night. Of course, it hadn't. It, it had been really hard to see. What with the darkness and the thick, swirling snow still falling beyond the valley was... Oh, with the snow still falling. Beyond the valley was a ridge. It was not as high or steep as the one we came, we came down, but it protected the valley from the driving blizzards that Mother told me always came in the winter. Near the center of the valley, but a little closer to the far side, there were there was a people cabin. It was bigger than most of the ones that Snow and I had seen in the town the time we were lost there. A heavy blanket of white lay between me and the cabin. Cautiously, I stepped into the clearing for a better look. Most of the cabin snow, oh, most of the cabin snow and I saw on our adventure were small and covered with flat white boards. This one was like a little hunting cat was like the little hunting cabins in the forest, except that it was much larger. The sides were made of round logs stacked one above the other. A little trail of smoke came from a pile of rock at the very top. There was other buildings near the big cabin. I still couldn't see very well, so I moved closer. One step at a time, I eased out into the clearing between me and the people place. The only sound was the crunching of the snow beneath my feet. At the center of the open area, I stopped. It made me feel a little nervous. Moose are much happier and feel safer when there are trees or rocks to hide us. But from here I could see almost everything. To my left, the valley seemed to stretch for miles, up towards a high country. But, oh, there were trees and a flat area where there was maybe a pond or something. Beyond that, a creek or stream with steep banks. Everywhere the snow was... Every, Everywhere, the snow was white and smooth as could be. No animal tracks broke the surface. No other living thing had been here. Nothing had touched this new snow, except for me. A bright golden glow replaced the pink of the sky. I could see much better behind the big log house. Oh, I could see much better. Behind the big log house was another building. It was almost as large, but instead of being covered with logs, it was covered with flat red boards. It was a barn. A fence made of logs came out from one side. Beyond that was another made of wire. This fence surrounded a big pasture. Between the barn and the cabin was a smaller building, and at the back, a sound made, made my eyes flash from, oh, a sound made my eyes flash and my head turn. I blinked and held my breath. It was a growl, soft and tiny. It sounded like the growl, oh, Sounded like the growl Snow made when he was trying to frighten all the children away at the school. I tilted my head to the side and wobbled my ears. Louder now, the sound moved towards us. Let's see. Honk! I whispered softly. Who's there? There was no answer, but the growly, but the growly sound got louder, closer. I didn't like it. Not one little bit. Fear made the hair on my legs tingle, turning... Turning, I strolled quickly back towards the trees. Ex exploring would be better w when Mother was around. Before I made it there, the growly sound had grown to a roar. I raced across the meadow and hid behind a huge pine. Rumbling like thunder, the sound moved closer and closer to the people cabin. I peeked through the pine needles. Snow sprayed into the air in great clouds. It flowed up and up, only to fall once more. When it came down, the snow made a hill. I couldn't figure it out. Snow fell Snow fell from the sky. It didn't fall from the ground into the air and then back again. It didn't make sense. Then suddenly I saw it. A huge monster rumbled towards the people cabin. Black smoke belched up from the top of its head. Enormous round teeth spun in its mouth as it gobbled up everything in its path. Snow spewed high into the air. My eyes grew wide and my legs trembled. Then something thumped my bottom attacked from the rear attacked from the rear i didn't take the time to turn around i just jumped right into the pine tree ah there we go 
uh, I was never so happy to see Mother's long, beautiful face in my life. She seemed to be a bit startled at first. Then she wobbled her head, snorted, and gave me a rather disgusted look. Bub, get down from there. Moose don't climb trees. <laughs> I didn't know you were there, I stammered. When you nudged me, I thought you were another monster, and he was gone, going to gobble me up. M Mother tilted her head to the side. Monster? Yeah, like the one who's going to eat the people the people cabin. See, I pointed to the clearing with my nose. Mother squinted and then she sighed. That's not <laughs> that's not a monster, bub. It's a, it is a snow blower. A people machine. It clears the snow away. I guess she could tell from my look the look on my face that I didn't understand. Remember the roads where the people the people cars go? She asked, Yes. Well the people cars can't go in the snow. They, their legs are round and short, not long and strong like ours. If you try to go through snow, their tummies drag the their their tummies drag and they get stuck. So the snow blow the snow blower machine has to come along and clear the snow away from the from the roads. You mean there's a you mean there's a road there? Yes, it's hidden by the deep snow. When the machine leaves, I will show you. Now get down out of that tree before you hurt yourself. Having never been in a tree, I w wasn't quite sure how I was supposed to get down. In fact, I wasn't quite sure how I got up. There was a limb under my tummy, right in front of my hind leg. There was another limb under my chest, right behind my front leg. My hooves dangled. I kicked my feet and feet and twisted and flopped around. Next thing I knew, the branch under my chest bent and my front and my front end slipped off. Only my back end under my tummy was still stuck on the branch. My front feet barely touched the ground. I stretched, but I was still just couldn't quite reach. So here I was with my rump in the air and my head and front legs dangling above the snow. Bub, quit fooling around. Get down from there right now. I'm trying, Mother. Honest. I kicked one hind leg, then the other. I kicked again and again until I felt like I was running upside down. Finally, the limb under my tummy gave a little crack and I fell. Struggling to my feet, I thought I fought my way through the limbs and bounded to Mother's side. She let me get a quick breakfast of milk. Then I moved back into the stand of aspen to forage. Using, using her long nose and lips, Mother scooted the snow aside and found some, some green twigs to chew. Now and then, she would rear up on her hind legs and nibble the fur bows on fur bows. As in trebos, B O U G H S, for those. I chewed some of the green twigs too. They weren't very tasty. As I moved along the side of the mountain, I kept looking back over my shoulder. The snowblower was going the other direction now. I could see the dark, shiny road beneath it. On either side, there were high mounds where the machine had thrown the snow. White plumes shot into the air, but the roar from the machine was almost gone. My mother foraged farther up the valley. I, I held back just a little. I was curious to see the rest of the people place. Surely mother wouldn't mind. Learning about new things and exploring is what young moose are supposed to do. Besides, I didn't sense any danger. Something inside told me that with the snow monster gone, I was perfectly safe. I headed back across the clearing towards the cabin. The ridge of snow beside the road was now like a little mountain. It was steep and slippery. I made it to the top, then slid down the other side. Once across the hard black road, I dug my hooves in and climbed the second snowbank. The top I stopped listening. Oh, I stopped. Listening, I strained to hear the sound, any sounds I didn't recognize. Clunk. My ears shot straight up. I froze. Held my breath. Keen eyes spotted two things moving towards the, towards the pen at the side of the barn. People. And we are to chapter five. We will be reading. We will be. Um, uh, excuse me. We'll be. Uh, we'll continue reading this. Um, in the next episode, and we made it pretty far. We are to chapter five. Now I'm not sure exactly how many chapters there are. I can check real quick. I don't want any spoilers, so we're just going uh, nine, twelve. 13. Um, there are 13 chapters. So, um, yeah. 
this is going to be a few episodes then. Anyways, if you like this content, this has been, first of all, this has been Bub Snow and the Burly Bear Scare by Carol Wallace and Bill Wallace. Um, if you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. And as always, any support is welcome, Being seeing as YouTube is my only source of income. And um, with that being said, all that donation information can be found in the description below. As, as always, thanks for watching everyone, and have a great day.